So the two bolded statements serve what purpose in the context of the public health advocates argument? So, um, so let's just let's just go through it and get a sense of it. So it's generally true that medications that undergo the extensive FDA phase three clinical safety testing are much safer than less researched drugs. It is also true that whenever such trials are conducted, fewer people have experienced unexpected harmful side effects, thus reducing public health risks. Without going any further, this bolded statement is clearly something that the advocate agrees with. The advocate says it is true that. So um, we, we definitely need it to be something um, that the author believes is generally true because he or she says it is true. However, <laughs> the, the public health advocate immediately follows it with however, so there's some uh, mitigating point here. However, eliminating the requirement that even FDA-tested medications continue to include extensive warnings about individual risk factors would almost certainly harm rather than help public health. Consumers would tend to rely on the FDA's general certification of safety, and if no longer encouraged to read about individual risks and drug interactions, many patients would suffer serious adverse reactions. So, the second one appears to be some kind of prediction uh, that the health advocate is making, saying, you know, if this happens, then this other thing will happen. So we have something that the author generally accepts to be true, and the second one is some kind of prediction. Let's look for that in the answer choices. A, the first is a general pattern that the advocate accepts as true. The second is said to be a natural consequence that must follow if the general pattern applies. So the first thing is a general pattern that the advocate accepts. The second one, though, is not a consequence of that. It's a consequence of the thing that's in the not bolded part in between. So it's not A. Uh, B, the first is a causal relationship that the advocate believes will happen again in the case at issue. The second admits a situation in which the relationship would not hold. Um, no, so the first one is not one that the advocate believes will happen uh, because it actually says, um, the, the advocate is actually saying that uh, removing these warnings will actually no longer reduce public health risks. So uh, the first part makes this one wrong. Uh, C, the first describes a cause and effect relationship that the advocate believes will not hold in the case at issue. The second consists a con the second suggests a consideration that supports that belief. So at first glance, this sounds like it's not describing what we thought it was going to describe. However, um, this second thing is a consideration, something that could happen. That's true. And if this happens, then the first bolded point does not actually, will not actually hold in the case at issue. So um, if, since the specific case is people would have uh, serious adverse reactions, then it would be true that we would have fewer people, that we, it would not be true that we would have fewer people experiencing unexpected harmful side effects if there are serious adverse reactions. So choice C is looking good. Let's check the other ones. Uh, D, the first is proof that the advocate uses to support a prediction. We can get rid of that. Um, and then E, the first acknowledges a consideration that weighs against the stance that the advocate supports. The second is that stance. So the second thing, it begins with an if. Um, if no longer encouraged, uh, many patients would suffer. That's not a stance. That's a prediction. So uh, it's not E either. And the answer is choice C.